So um, we're all familiar with ChatGPT at this point. Uh, and when Marty said, how about doing a presentation on AI and investing, I went to ChatGPT and I put in a uh, prompt that said, my friend Marty asked me to do a PowerPoint presentation on AI and alternative investing. Um, write me a PowerPoint. And you can see here within just over one minute, I had a 20 page PowerPoint presentation. There are a couple of things that I didn't like about it. So I reprompted it and I said, can you modify these pages? And again, within just over one minute, I had a revised PowerPoint uh, for uh, this presentation. So I'll point out as I go through here, there are, um, con there are parts of it which are very, uh, which, which are directly from AI. So. Real quickly, um, I'm going to I'm going to talk quickly because this is a big topic with uh, and have a lot of information to share. But I'll be here all day and uh, to answer any questions you might have, and you can certainly contact me on email as well. So I apologize for going quickly, but um, so we're going to cover AI and how we're using AI in our operations and in investing. I'm also going to go through an investment example. Then I'm going to discuss how we're using AI in risk management, and then give you leave you with three takeaways. Okay, a quick credibility statement about me, why I can talk about this. So I started uh, World War II in 2013. We have a net tagger of just under 25% on invested capital. So just to be clear, that is net and it excludes our cash balance. We are also getting what we think is the industry first algo attestation. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but a big three accounting firm uh, is working with us on doing that. And all of our technology is built in-house. I've never used a Bloomberg terminal or capital IQ or anything like that. So in July, we launched uh, this new strategy, um, which is really just a revised 2.0 of our first strategy. Since July, you can see on a cumulative basis, we're significantly outperforming the two uh, benchmarks. Um, and um, on from an alpha and sharp standpoint, you can see we've done that with very low correlation to the major markets. Okay, so how are we deploying AI? First, I'm gonna talk about, uh, let's define it actually first. So AI refers to an automated system that mimics human intelligence, effort, and decision-making. And there are two ways that we're using AI uh, in our operations. One is to automate tasks. And examples of that would be extract, transform, load, and analyze. For the investment analysts out there, you're very familiar with this process. Uh, if you're not familiar, what it means is extract means to pull data from like a Bloomberg or a fact set, uh, or you transform that into a more readable format or into the um, KPIs that you're interested in looking at, and then you load it and analyze it. I can tell you before migrating over to an AI generated algo, it would take me about two weeks to thoroughly analyze one company. That's just how it was. Um, and then obviously you can generate insights. So part of being an investment analyst is you want to find insights in the data that you're um, evaluating. I just list two here, but of course there are a whole bunch more correlations, anomalies. Uh, okay. So how are we using AI in operations? You you'll see here, my subtitle is work smarter with one click operations. I have designed global returns operations and I'm still in the process of designing our operations where literally we are pushing one button and software code does everything else. Um, it is not an overstatement to say that operations can be run with in that capacity. And we're currently doing it with a number of our day-to-day -day activities, weekly activities and monthly activities. So Excel, and we're able to do that because AI excels at doing repetitive tasks. And that's, there's a lot of benefits to that. One of which is freeing up our time to do more important activities. So here's an AI generated image. And you can see I prompted it, show me a one click uh, operations image and make it look new age. And, um, but you can see there's actually misspellings here and there are um, phrases in there that I didn't use. And I, I wanna highlight that as an example that AI, it still needs oversight. It still needs uh, tuning, it still needs prompted. Um, but in, a, I don't know, three seconds, I had that. That's, that's a lot of efficiency. So some of the areas where we're using our one-click operations are custom client reports, monthly reporting, and risk and return analysis. And the benefits are pretty obvious. We're saving a lot of time. It's one and done. So unless I need to go back and fix the code or fine tune it, I don't have to look at that again. Um, it's obviously, and it's a lot more cost efficient to have uh, algorithms do it than, than people or outsource vendors. So how are we using AI and in investing? 
finding the elusive alpha. Um, this year, so AI's ability to process data quickly and accurately to uncover alpha significantly surpasses the human ability. And the two things I wanna highlight here are process data quickly and accurately. The, um, <laughs> so here's another image, and I'll, I'll come back to say that in a second. Here's another image I could not find. So I had to buy this image on Shutterstock. I couldn't find, I couldn't generate a good image that talked about financial analysis, data analysis, writing code through any AI. Um, at the end of this presentation are actually five of the AI images that were generated. So you can go back and look and see what was generated, but I couldn't find anything that worked. So there's an example of where um, you, you, know, you still need human oversight. So how we're using AI and investing, there are three areas here, uh, extract, transform, load, analyze, which I talked a little bit um, earlier about. Most analysts and portfolio managers would agree that about 80% of our time is spent on evaluating investment opportunities um, and applying AI to that has significantly reduced our time to analyze and risk management. So those are the two examples I'm gonna talk about here. So our AI algo investment process, uh, you can see here, there's um, uh, five steps here. So we all know public companies file with the SEC. In fact, um, we're doing this every 15 minutes. So I know since I walked in here, we've already scraped the SEC website twice for the entire Russell 3000, which technically is, I think, like 3,300 companies. And we are pulling all anything that they have filed. Um, that data is being pulled into our database. We're doing a data quality assessment. And then step five, we're calculating multiple uh, statistical analysis and evaluating each company's proprietary factors. Okay, that's for all the Russell 3000. Like I said before, it would take me about two weeks to thoroughly analyze one company before. This tra extract, transform, load, analyze now takes about 20 seconds for the entire Russell 3000. That's powerful. And the value to investors is that not only am I looking, before I could only look at one company, now I can look at 3,300 companies in 20 seconds, which enables me to find more opportunity. It enables me to, um, yeah, uncover alpha. So the second part of this process is we go through a query process and then a stock list is produced. These are stocks that we could buy. And then we conduct a R, uh, RRR stands for risk reward calculation, which is how we evaluate investments. I'll talk more about that in the next slide. A buy and sell list is created and then we execute the orders. That is, that is called data output. That takes us 10 seconds. So for anybody uh, who's interested um, at some point later today or uh, tomorrow or on a Zoom meeting later, I can show you how in about 30 seconds we're evaluating the Russell 3000 and um, uh, coming up with the buy and sell list. So here's an investment example. We're all familiar with Fox Corporation. In July, we bought the stock. The algo recommended an enter price of 32.31. We were going to exit for a loss at 31.29, and the target price is $38 for a 17% return. Risk reward, how we look at investments, opportunities at global return is a risk reward ratio. So if we took a loss on this investment, the risk to the fund was eight basis points. If we achieved our investment return, we would have added 42 basis points to the fund. And that's a risk reward ratio of 19. So you can look at that 19 as we're risking 19 cents to make $1. Uh, how did it work out? So the investment generated a 19% return over the same period of time, S&P 500 a little over 4%, Russell 3000 a little under 5%. And that's how we're uncovering and capturing alpha. So AI and risk management, how am I doing on time? Um, you got about five minutes. Okay, thanks. AI and risk management, I am underlining this because that's really the key to, I think, successful investing is detecting risk and then responding to it when you have it and um, or when it's been identified. I do have a question. Yes. So, so, you know, one of the things that people bring up about the way that artificial intelligence is used is that a lot of the algorithms for artificial intelligence were written in the 1970s and 1980s. And now because computer has <laughs> increased so much, they can actually implement these algorithms, right? Are you finding any of this happening right now? And when your strategy is that nobody ever thought about how to crunch all of these numbers, you know, all at once, right? That you can do in 20 seconds, what took you weeks to do, right? Are you finding that there are things that have been laid out and yeah. financial theory that now you can do the report? You know, yes, yes, I am. And I'll 
go back to the example of ChatGPT, a year ago, you couldn't do that. And when you stop and you think about the ability to create a 10 uh, or a 30 page PowerPoint presentation or a 30 minute presentation in a little over a minute, that is radical evolution. And so what's happened was um, you've had this radical evolution of, of technology that's come to market enabling code development and applying this. Uh, did I answer your question? I think so. Uh, I guess my next question was, are there, will there be new algorithms as resulting as a result of being able to look at this on this macro way? Yeah, so they, the great thing about algorithms is you can write them uh, anytime, all the time. So, I mean, I literally, we, we've got probably half a dozen algorithms we're working on right now. Um, and I think successful fund managers who are going to be in the game a long time will continue to add algorithms to their investment process. Um, yeah, I mean, more algorithms should and will be coming to market. And by the way, I want to, you know, just as it relates to my own strategy, um, I, uh, that we went live with in July, it was five years in the making. And a, a really good algorithm is going to take a long time to, to, to develop. It shouldn't with AI. Pardon me? It shouldn't because of AI. Over time, there will, yeah, so it's, what you're talking about is generative AI and machine learning. Um, uh, that is really advanced uh, technical development. And I would be very skeptical for the investors in the audience. I would be very skeptical of fund managers. I'm sorry, do you two want to take your conversation outside? <laughs> no, just keep on going. Um, I would be really skeptical of fund managers who say they're using machine learning. I don't doubt that a lot of people are trying it. I really don't, but um, it's difficult to implement. What I found with generative AI, it speaks to the level you speak. So if you speak math, it does math also. Correct. Yeah. So Elliot, yes. to this point about AI, do you think AI will simply curve fit the past and then create an algorithm that won't work? Is that where we're going? So I think that's the difference between successful investing today versus not successful yes. investing today. Yeah. Um, I'd like to tell you ours doesn't. Yeah, I'd like to tell you ours doesn't. Um, one of the huge benefits that people are using AI for is, is massive amounts of back testing. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there is a rhythm to history, but I can tell you this algo is uh, was not our algo that I'm talking about right now was not based on historical data. Uh, let me re what I will say is we used 5.2 million pieces of data to tr to, to tr um, develop it. We used 16 years worth of data and 48,000 different companies, but it's not a back tested algo in the sense that I think you're talking about. Okay, so I know we're running uh, uh, short on time here. So real time analysis, um, literally right now I can open up my laptop, look at our portfolio and I'll have a, a real time analysis of our risk reward ratios, a probability for loss. There will also be, because we're pulling in live data, um, there will, could possibly be one of two alerts. One alert that we have is for uh, this needs reviewed. There are a couple of reasons why that would pop up. And then the second one is this, this stock needs sold or bought. Predictive analytics, um, that is just the, Marty, to your question earlier, that's application of, of uh, existing math, um, but it's been automated. And then automated trading, uh, which candidly has been going on for a long time. Um, but it's more seamless today. I mean, I was trying to use APIs five years ago from some of the biggest, best companies there were, and it was a lot of the data was, most of it didn't work, frankly. So AI risk management, obviously uh, results matter. So you can see here our chart ratio significantly outpasses um, the indexes. Um, one thing I want to point out, R squared, for those who aren't familiar, and R squared tells you how much of my return <clears throat> or your funds return that you're evaluating is a result of a benchmark. So in this case, we're looking at S&P 500, Russell 2000. So if, so you can see here, our R squared of the S&P 500 is 0 0.12. What that's saying is that 88% of our return is a result of the algo, not a result of what the S&P 500 did. So if this said 0 0.9, you could look at it and say, well, you're just paying high fees to, to get beta because 90% of our return would be coming as a result of the S&P 500. So you want it to be low. The other 
reason I want to highlight this is when it's that low, it implies then that you can go in and actually continue to tune it and continue to enhance it. That we're actually generating return in alpha on the algo, not because of what the S&P 500 or Russell 3000 did. Closing and takeaways. So AI is a powerful tool that enhances operations. Build it once and deploy it. It frees up a significant amount of time um, in one-click operations. It's a game-changing advantage. It can increase returns uh, and reduce risk. And then lastly, it's here. Um, and to remain competitive, fund managers need to adapt and adopt. I'll leave you with this. The future of alternative investing is smart technology and smart managers who understand how to build the technology. And yes, that was written by AI. I'm available for any other questions. Marty, thank you so much. I'm going to ask you to oh, take okay. a seat also. Fantastic. Great.